62 new cases confirmed of COVID in the community yesterday. We were warned the numbers would get worse before they got better. So is this worse or is the worst still to come? In other words, have we peaked? Joining us for more is uh, the Director General of the Ministry of Health, Dr Ashley Bloomfield. Morena. Morena. I know you're not going to tell us how many cases, etc, etc, etc. So let's not do that dance. But you said earlier in the week that we would peak towards the end of this week. Do the numbers you're seeing at the moment indicate that the peak is actually going to be delayed? Oh, look, there were definitely more cases uh, trickling in through the day yesterday, talking to our colleagues up in Auckland, and we'll expect more overnight. Uh, yesterday, 62 was a pretty high number, and we may well have a, a high number again today. We will be looking, uh, as you said, over this next day or two to see that levelling off and then start to drop. OK, so we'll start to drop when now uh, you're predicting Saturday? Uh, well, my hope is it'll be uh, even before then, but Friday, Saturday uh, would be our hope. We will see the alert level four um, uh, restrictions really start to kick in then, even though this is Delta. And we've seen you know, in, in a, a large number of cases just showing how quickly this Delta variant does transmit uh, through the community. Indeed. All right, a lot of criticism of your ministry in the last 24 hours. Uh, this is because of patients who were given water and salt, basically, instead of a vaccine. Um, potentially five, up to five people this might have happened to. We're not entirely sure in Auckland. Why did you not inform either them or the public about what might have gone on at this particular clinic? Yeah, just to confirm, what what happened here was uh, one of the vi one of the vials was left over at the end of the day when they did their reconciliation, and the first thing was to do an investigation to find out exactly what had happened and whether or not anyone had missed out. Then, if there were five people out of the 732. It wasn't actually that they got saline, but they would have got a diluted dose because one of the vials, which would have had a dose left in it, we were only getting five out of the vials on that, at that clinic that day. There may have been five people who got a diluted dose that day. So first of all, the, we were working with the DHB to find out exactly what had happened, but also then what w we should do uh, and what options were available. And that's where we were waiting for clinical advice on that. So when we communicated with those people who were uh, affected by it, and you know, it, I, I'm, I'm sorry that that incident happened, uh, but we did want to make sure we were able to tell people what the options were and what they should do next. But in the meantime, we had people like Fiona Tollock. Have a listen to Fiona Tollock, who was out in the community. She's got underlying health conditions. We know that COVID was swirling around in the community at this time. She got vaccinated, she thinks, on that day. You guys weren't sure whether everybody was vaccinated. Uh, on that day. Have a listen to Fiona. I think it's time that they wake up and actually started being truthful or we will stop trusting what they have to say. She feels betrayed and lied to. Does she have a right to feel that way? Well, I'm sorry she feels that way, but uh, no one lied to her. We were just making sure we had all the information that was needed to be able to tell the people who did get vaccinated that day, many of them with their second dose and some with their first. That was and I should say six that weeks all, there ago. are about 25 who haven't had a there are 25 who haven't had a second dose and they're all being uh, expedited to be vaccinated in this next couple of days and everybody will get an email or a courier letter uh, in the next 24 hours uh, and then obviously follow-up phone call just to talk about the situation and explain and uh, what the options are for them. This was July 12th, though, six weeks ago. Did you, could we not yes, have done I this quicker? So. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a very important well, health issue for these people. You can understand, particularly if you have underlying health conditions, why you'd be worried. Yes, I can understand why people might be worried, and that's why we wanted to be sure that there was something to worry about, and there's still uncertainty about whether anyone missed out, but also to be really clear about what we were advising people. OK, so what date did you find out about the potential mistake? Oh, look, our team would have been uh, told about it within the first few days, and uh, they've been working very closely with Auckland DHB on uh, the follow-up and response to it. When was the investigation started? What date? Oh, it would have been started uh, on that day because the important thing was to interview the clinical staff immediately to try to get to the bottom of why there was and this leftover still file. Not, still not finished yet, that investigation, as you've said. Do you, did you inform the minister? And what date was that? 
Uh, yes, the Minister was made aware that uh, there was an incident that was being looked into, properly investigated and proper action taken up. I don't know which date uh, the Minister was informed, but certainly we made him aware that the right actions were in, in uh, train to follow up, and indeed some immediate actions uh, were put in place to avoid the potential for going a whole day before that reconciliation happens. You can't remember the specific date, but would that have been pretty soon after, I'd imagine, you found out? Yes, we, we would have let the Minister know that there was an incident and that it was being follow, followed up appropriately, appropriately and that we were getting uh, clinical advice sure. on what Under, the appropriate thing to do with was. With no yeah. surprises. Did you inform the Prime Minister? Uh, I didn't personally inform the Prime Minister. The Minister may well do that, but that's his, uh, that's his uh, channel. All right. And your reassurance for the public that this hasn't happened anywhere else? We've heard about a case in Christchurch, but apart from that, there is no one else walking around right now with saline in their arm instead of a vaccine. Look, what I can say is the reason that this incident was found is because we have meticulous processes in place to do these things, the reconciliations. The uncertainty was whether or not there had actually been, uh, whether it was a recording error or whether someone, anyone had received a lower dose than they should have. I can assure the public that the, the program has been very thoroughly planned and it's been rolled out very safely. And I think anyone who's had a vaccination would see that from their experience. All right, thank you very much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. Dr Ashley Bloomfield, who is the Director General of Health. I've got my jab coming up in a couple of weeks, which I'm looking forward to. Um, but interesting, we heard there that there is an investigation still underway into what exactly happened on that day. Uh, we'll bring you more information on it as it comes to hand.